Hey guys, my name is Stacia and I am so excited to get to give this message tonight and it's going to be kind of an emotional one tonight so just bear with me a little bit. Um, it's a, my last time getting to do this up here for a while and I'm really excited about it but also a little sad so um, just bear with me. But I'm so excited to get to wrap up this series. It has been so much fun so far um, and I just want to let you know just to um, fill out that connection card that's in your seat. There's going to be some next steps also on it that you can look at. I'll refer to them later in the message. But just write down your name at least, maybe what grade you're going into. Just let us know you're here. Um, but anyways, we're in this series called Three Beautiful Words. And so far, we've talked about two words. The first word was invited. So we talked about being invited and how to invite people. And last week we talked about belong, and we talked about how we belong, and so how everyone else belongs to. And tonight I'm really excited to get to finish up with forgiven. And I don't want to give away too much of what we're going to talk about tonight, but um, we're going to be talking about forgiven, and I'm super excited about it. So how many of you guys like to tell stories? I like to tell stories. Okay, so we like to tell stories, and we like to make ourselves look good in stories, right? Especially all the guys in the room, you're like, yeah, that one time I saved a dog. Wink, wink. <laughs> Specific people in the room um, that saved a dog. Um, but we like to make ourselves look good, and we like to tell stories that make us feel good. And we don't really like to tell stories about like when we made stupid decisions, right? So we like to make ourselves the hero, not the a sad ending to a story or the ones that cause the problems. We don't like to tell stories about when we make mistakes. We like to tell stories about when we fix things and when we make the right decisions. And so, unfortunately, we like to tell all these big, important stories, but we're not usually the hero. Actually, we're never the hero, um, and it's never us that gets to do the saving. And tonight, I'm just going to tell you three truths about being a Christian and about being a human. So the first one is, number one, I am a sinner. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We're all sinners. And it's just a fact of life. It's something that happened a long time ago. And we aren't the heroes that get to save the day at the end of every story. We um, do the wrong things. We make the wrong choices. We hang out with the wrong people. We spend time doing the wrong things. We say the wrong things. We are sinners. And in Romans 3.23, it tells us, For all have fallen short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I'm sorry. I have different translations going. I want you to under underline all have sinned. All. We've all sinned. All of us as humans have sinned and we will sin and we will continue to sin. That's just who we are as humans. Adam and Eve did that for us a long time ago. And that's what it talks about in Genesis 3, which is the, the reference in your outline. Eve fell trapped to the temptation that the devil placed in front of her. They were given a perfect situation. But because of their decision, they changed our situation. We are in a place in a fallen world where we sin, and everyone around us does too, and it's easy to do that. And because there is an enemy, like every story with every superhero, there's an enemy somewhere causing terror, and we have one of those too, and he is the devil. And because he brought us into this situation where sin surrounds us, we deserve the same situation that he has, which is hell. It's just a fact of being human. We, because we are sinners, we deserve the ultimate punishment, which is hell. But I want to bring you to our second fact tonight, which is point number two, which is I am forgiven. We have a hero to save the day. And whether you picture him as the angel with the pretty halo, or whether you picture him as Captain America, which is my favorite superhero, or whether you picture him as an old guy with a beard and a robe. However you picture your hero, 
which is Jesus, we do have a hero. And the real hero, Jesus, came and took that punishment that we deserved all on himself, which talks about in Isaiah 53, 5. It says that, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. I want you to underline, we are healed. Because, because of our sin, we're broken people. We have broken hearts. We have broken minds. We are broken. But because we have Jesus and because we are forgiven for those sins, for those wrongdoings, we are healed. Which is my favorite truth, that we are healed over and over again, that we're forgiven over and over again. And some people may not believe it, but we didn't have to earn it. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to do good works. We don't have to um, make sacrifices like they did in the Old Testament. We don't have to put our dog on the altar and say, God, please forgive me for my sin last night because it was a Saturday and I was drinking with my friend, so here's my dog. Please make it better. We don't have to do that. We don't have to make sacrifices. We don't have to give up things. We don't have to do all of these laws that were presented in the Old Testament because God gave us his son to replace them. And we get it for free. For free? Okay, laugh at that, please. Make me feel good. Thank you. And that, we get it for free because God has grace. And it's taken me a long time to understand grace, and I still don't think I really do, but I like to think that I understand grace because I like to understand things. And the easiest way that I figured out to understand grace is that it's a free gift given to me that I didn't deserve. I didn't deserve a free gift. None of us deserve free gifts, but we like free gifts, right? We like free gifts, right? Right, like you're out with your friends, you're like, free ice cream samples? You're like, yes, me, please. I want the free ice cream sample. Or when you're at Sands Club with your mom on a Saturday and there's like a sample in every aisle and you're like, yes, this is it. This is why I came to Sands Club with my mom today. We don't deserve the free samples, but we love the free samples. We love the free gifts. We love um, all of the holidays where we get gifts. Raise your hand if your favorite holiday is Christmas. Wow, that's a lot less of you than I thought. So, that's not my favorite holiday. My favorite holiday is actually Easter, but I get free gifts on Easter too, right? And I get free gifts on my birthday, and I get free gifts on Valentine's Day, and I, for, I get free gifts on all these holidays, and we like holidays because we get free gifts. We love free gifts, and God loves to give us free gifts. Like That's his favorite thing ever. He loves to give us free gifts, and Jesus was his favorite free gift to give us. In Romans 3.24, which is taking place right after the verse that we talked about in um, point number one, which is all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now in Romans 3.24, it says, yet God. I want you to underline yet. That's not usually a transition word that you hear a lot in common speech now, but yet means something big is coming when you read it in the Bible. Yet God. In his grace free gifts that we don't deserve, freely, for free, makes us right in his sight. We're wrong all the time. Even if you don't like to admit it, trust me, I don't like to admit when I'm wrong. But God makes us right in his sight. He looks at us through rose-colored glasses. He looks at us through blood-covered glasses. Jesus' blood on the cross is the glasses that, Jesus, that God looks at us through. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. And what was the penalty for our sins? What was it? The person that said it was right, what was it? Hell. The penalty for our sins for our everyday life is hell. Over and over and over again. We deserve hell. But this is my favorite part. There's grace, which is free gifts that we didn't deserve. Free good gifts get it right, free good gifts, but there's also mercy. 
and I love mercy. My favorite way to explain mercy, to think about mercy, is not getting a bad thing that you did deserve. So we do deserve hell, but because of Jesus, we don't have to get hell. We don't have to take that punishment because when we ask for forgiveness, when we are forgiven, we don't have to get the bad penalty, which is hell. How many of you guys have ever gotten into a fight with your best friend or significant other? Okay, that's everyone in the room. Everyone has gotten in a fight with their best friend, significant other, um, parent, someone. You've gotten into a fight with someone before. If you're a teenage girl like me, then sometimes that fight with your, your best friend lasts like several months because you just keep saying mean things to each other. Like guys are easy. They like punch each other and then they're like, hey, we're bros again. Like girls, it's not really like that. We fight and fight and fight and fight and we just keep saying mean things and we're like, okay, I'm not going to talk to you for a whole week. Okay, I can make fun of me because I do that. But we fight and we fight and we fight and we keep going and we keep being mean. We keep doing the wrong things. We keep being wrong even when we think we're right over and over and over again. And the hardest part about thinking you're right is when you have to admit that you're wrong. That's the hardest part. The hardest part about being a Christian is admitting to God every time you're wrong which is a lot. We're all wrong all the time. But that free gift that God gave us of salvation is something that we get for free. All we have to do is ask for it. But that seems like the hardest part sometimes because we don't want to admit when we do do things wrong. We don't, we don't want to apologize for hanging out with our friends on Saturday night too late, making one bad decision. We don't want to ask for forgiveness for it because it was fun. We had a good time. Everyone else was doing it. We want to keep making the wrong decisions over and over again because they're, they're fun. Everyone's doing it. I'm going to college. I can do whatever I want. But no. <laughs> I am sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry, I got a you're not from the back, but I am. Um, and over and over again, we keep making the wrong decisions. But all God wants us to do is to ask for forgiveness. And once we've asked for forgiveness once, we don't have to do it again. And I think we all get caught up in that sometimes. Because someone reminds us about, oh, dude, remember that time two years ago? Because we have social media and people can bring it back up really easy. They just click a few buttons and all of a sudden that video of you from two years ago is back on Twitter and it's circulating and everyone can see it. It's easy for everyone else around us to remember the wrong things that we did, but God doesn't. God doesn't have a human brain. God doesn't look at us and think, oh, remember that time two years ago? After you ask for forgiveness for it, it's gone. Forever. You don't have to bring it back up. You don't have to ask for forgiveness again. All you have to do is accept the free gift of forgiveness. And sometimes you have to do it over again, because sometimes you keep making the wrong mistake over and over and over again. But God will forgive you every single time time. He wants to. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be your savior. And maybe you haven't asked God to do that at all yet. But that's the best decision you can ever make, is to ask God to forgive you of your sins, to be your friend, to be your savior. And so that's one of your next steps tonight. It's on the back of your outline and it's going to be up here on the screen. It is right here. But I am receiving the forgiveness of Jesus. And sometimes in church, we get so caught up in the first time salvations, the first time of doing things that we kind of forget that it happens again. We ask for Jesus' forgiveness again. We recommit our lives to Jesus sometimes. We're human. We sin. We mess up. But we can come back whenever we want. We can come back freely with no charge. You can leave and come back. It's a, it's, God wants to take you back. And so tonight, I don't want you to think of this next step as a first time. I don't want you to think of it, maybe it is your first time, and if it is, 
congratulations, welcome to the family. But maybe it's not the first time, maybe it's the second time that you're coming to Jesus, maybe it's the third time. Congratulations, welcome back to the family. He wants to forgive you over and over and over again. And in Kids Church, we have a prayer that we do every Sunday to give kids the opportunity every single Sunday to ask Jesus into their life. And it's our ABC prayer, and it's as easy as ABC, I promise. A stands for admit. We admit that we're sinners, which was point number one that we talked about, right? We are sinners. We admit it. B is that we believe. Jesus exists. Jesus loves me. Jesus died for me. Jesus forgives me. And C is call. This is the action step where you have to say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. And so if you want to say that prayer tonight, do it. Do it right now in your head. Do it in a few minutes when we're singing. Do it in your connect group later. Do it in the car on the way home. Do it. It's the best decision to ever make. And so we're going to jump into point number three which is the fun part. I am for others. I am for others. How many of you guys have ever attended to or been thrown a surprise party? Wow, we need to up up our game. If your friends are having a birthday, throw them a surprise party, they're fun. How many of you guys have ever had a surprise ruined? Like someone buys you a present and then they tell you what it is. Yeah, that happens every once in a while, and you're like, darn it, the suspense is gone. But the secret of Jesus and his forgiveness, this one you're supposed to share with people. It's not supposed to be a secret. You want to share it with people. It's a good thing. You're like, whoa, yes. Like, when you have a, something big that happens in your life, you want to tell everyone. It's a good thing. And that's how Jesus is supposed to be for us. Once we're forgiven, once we're freed, once we freely receive that gift of forgiveness, we have to share it with everyone else. And so everyone deserves that forgiveness. Everyone deserves a chance to be forgiven. It's probably a better way to say that. And God wants to forgive everyone. Even that person that you hate, that drives you insane, that sits behind you in math class or down the table at lunch or works with you. All of the above. God wants to forgive them and he wants you to give them the opportunity to be forgiven. In Galatians 5.13, it says, It is absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Underline that, a free life. Just make sure that you don't use your freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. I love the message version. Don't do whatever you want to do. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. So your friends are never going to be forgiven if you don't invite them to church. If you don't tell them your story. If you don't tell them about Jesus, your family is never going to experience God's love like you do if you never give them the chance. You have to pursue people in a way that shows them God's love. And sometimes you don't have to talk about God for people to see God in you. You shouldn't have to, actually. Sometimes you don't have to say God's name for people to see him in you. Because that's how God works. God likes to shine through you, whether you are specifically talking about him or not. But that love that he has, that forgiveness that he wants to freely give, can come out of you to be given to someone else. In the Great Commission, it says, go to all the world. Go to all the world. Go to school and tell your friends. Go to work and tell your coworkers and your boss. Go home and tell your family. Go to your grandma's house and tell her. Go wherever it is and tell about the good news, that Jesus has come and that he wants to forgive you. And so the next step, on your, um, the next step that you can take tonight, the second one, 
is that I will share the forgiveness of Jesus. And I think that everyone can take that next step. This on your connection card, if you decide to take it, put it on the connection card. Just do it. It's easy. It's a check mark. We're not going to come to your house and be like, did you share Jesus? It's for you. Once you made that commitment on paper, then you make that commitment to share Jesus. And this morning, Pastor Jeff talked about sharing Jesus with people. That was his next step this morning, and that's why I knew that that was exactly what I was supposed to share with you guys tonight, because his next step this morning was that I will share Jesus, I will share my story. And everyone deserves to hear that story, and we're about to get back into the swing of things with school. You are not too cool to love Jesus. You are not too cool to tell people about church on Sunday. You're forgiven. You're given a free gift. And everyone wants a free gift. Everyone wants to know about that free gift. And so in just a few minutes, we're going to get up and sing. We're going to get up and worship however you choose to worship. But when you do that, I want you to take a second and pray. And there's a few different prayers that you might be praying. Maybe you're asking for forgiveness for the first time or the second or third or seventh time. Maybe that's the prayer you need to say. Maybe you're praying for someone else to forgive someone else in your own heart. Because once you've forgiven someone else, it's so much easier to share Jesus with them. Because we all have those people in our life that we need to forgive, that we need to move on from, that we need to give to Jesus. Or maybe you need to pray for yourself to be forgiven of something. Maybe you haven't forgiven yourself, which is harder than asking Jesus to forgive you because your human brain brings things up over and over and over again. And maybe the last prayer is that you just need someone to tell about Jesus. God, give me someone to tell about Jesus. Give me an opportunity to share forgiveness with someone, to share Jesus' love with someone. And so when we get up and pray, we get up and worship in a minute, maybe you want to come down to the altar and pray. Maybe you want to pray to yourself. Maybe you want to pray with a friend because it's easier to say it out loud. Maybe you want to pray with one of the volunteers in the room. They want to do that with you. They want to pray with you. Your connect group leader wants to pray with you. So take that opportunity and listen to God while we're worshiping and talk to him. So I'm going to pray, and then the band's going to come out and sing one of my favorite songs sometimes. So go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. Hey, Daddy. I just want to thank you for this amazing opportunity that I had tonight to share your free gift with all of the people in this room. Thank you for giving me the chance to be a part of this youth group, of this church, where love is just thrown all over the place. God, I pray that you just give us the courage to ask you for the forgiveness that we need. I pray that you give us the courage to forgive the people that have hurt us, pray that you give us the courage to tell people about forgiveness. God, I pray that you just move in every student and volunteer's life tonight, and I pray that you just reveal yourself to them. God, just help us to soak you in and all you are and all that you have for us. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on, worship.